Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Vern, The Shape of Fantasy, where we're in one of these flashbacks to this bridge again, and I'm wondering if we're actually going to get... <sighs> Something holds me from moving! I wonder if we're going to get some sort of context to what this is now. Um, we've reached Ancestor Island in the sort of main plot. What's this? Jewels, your mother and I are deeply disappointed with you. Your preposterous pretension of becoming a writer and your incessant failures are transforming the good name of Vern Alot into a joke among respectable people. We have resolved to give you an ultimatum. If, by the end of the year, you don't have an honorable job, we will feel that we only have four sons, not five, Pierre and Sophie. This letter, I have read it before, but me, a writer? Come on, here, now! Whoa, whoa, what was that? Jesus. Wake up, Ancestor's Island, Sea of Darkness. So that letter told us about Vern as we know him, a writer. Not the Vern that we know in this story, yet he finds it familiar. Very interesting. Where am I now? What happened? The sky. Why has it that colour? This place looks awesome. I love I love the use of those colours. God. What is that? What, what what is it? God. Is it one of the instruments from in the inside the Nautilus? I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, right, anyway, let's head this way. Oh, yes, yeah, so these are... What the are... hell is going on? Have I finally turned insane? This light. Oh, my head is killing me. But I must continue. I can't allow neither Nemo nor the Raven to take over the flame. I must stop them. But what can I do? I know. I will look for the ancestors. They will know what to do. Maybe. Hopefully. Okay, find the ancestors. So it does seem as though the Vern that we know and the Vern in this story are starting to clash, if that makes sense. Well, that seems to be the idea anyway. Oh, wow, look at this. I've got to say, the visuals are stunning in this game. They really are. The use of colour, the pixel art, everything is really, really well done. Nadine! Oh, God. Uh, is she dead? Yep, she is. Alright. Well, Nadine, navigator officer. She has an enormous talent for navigation and has improved all the navigation systems of the Nautilus since her arrival. Nadine is in charge of piloting the submarine, preparing navigation charts and managing all external communications. She rarely goes down to the work areas of the Corps. She was born in the nation, but as a child she was forced to escape and take refuge in the American Empire due to the persecution her parents suffered for their political and religious ideas. She joined one of Captain Nemo's rebel cells in charge of stealing and sabotaging the nation's technology. After successfully passing his demanding tests, she became one of the Nautilus family. When the first pilot died in an attack, Nemo did not hesitate to give her the job. Her crazy and grumpy character does not prevent her from being an excellent professional, although she has trouble following the rules. She loves sailing, the feeling of movement and control is what fills her the most, but she is afraid of losing her youth. She wants to live and not be locked between tons of metal. Every day that passes, she is more tired of the war and the hardships she suffers with Nemo. Well. God. Will there be any survivor? I can hear coughing, so maybe. <coughs> Someone's coughing. Nemo! Oh, Nemo. He doesn't. Oh, Vern! <coughs> I'm glad to see you. What happened to you? Where are the others? Dead. All dead. What? Damn it. All of them? My understanding was that good captains always sank with their ships. My crew is dead because of me. My Nautilus wrecking. No, Vern, I haven't been a good captain at all. However, abandoning the ship was not my idea. An explosion put me down in currents dragged me here. A part of me wants to help you, but the other wants to leave you here, alone with your grief. 
Tell me, what would you do in my place? That Project H monstrosity would deserve you. Project H? I knew it was infamous, but something inside me kept me moving forward. It was a dreadful solution, yes, but it was perfect. Almost divine. A complete purification. By all gods, Vern, you must believe me. Only a soul sickened by fear and anger would brew something as heinous as Project H. When I saw my wife and my daughter dying by the hands of the nation, I... I could do nothing to save them. They fade in my arms. I took revenge, yes. With my own hands, I cut the throat of the captain that gave the execution order. But I have never been able to get rid of the horror of my own helplessness. And now, my Nautilus, my crew, it's all destroyed. You have opened Pandora's box, Captain. You have brought the flame to the nation's fingertips. You have sentenced mankind. I deserve all your disdains. But let me ask you for a last favor. The iMag. Me and the Nautilus have enough strength to bow out in a blaze of glory. Help me to board back, and I will make sure that the Valkyrie will never take the flame away. By yourself? Are you insane? Maybe. After all, I am Captain Nemo. Let me help you save the world. I mean... Oh! Okay, I wasn't expecting a quick time event. <laughs> Took me by surprise. Will that be enough? <coughs> Perfect. No, I can by myself. Well, guess he's going to try and redeem himself. I'm sorry that everything has come to this end. In another world, everything would have been different. Better. It has been an honor, Jules Verne. Thanks, Captain. Have a safe journey. How is he going to take that down by himself? I mean, I guess we're going to find out, but... Off he goes. Well, off goes Nemo. Nadine's dead. I can see someone else floating in the uh, water back there. And we've got to find these ancestors. Uh, can we... Can we use the iMac here? No. Okay, what can we... What can we do around here? Maybe we can go back and use the iMac somewhere else? Mm, not there. No cracks detected. I mean, what about back here, where that instrument was right at the start? No. God. Hmm. That's uh, strange. Where do we go? Obviously, we can look out there, but it doesn't seem to help us. The goal is literally just to um, find the ancestors, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, well, I don't know if we can do any climbing or anything. It looked like it was a bit high to climb. I, d I don't see that we can do anything here. Can't climb the tree? I mean, I don't really know what to do. 
There are no cracks. What on earth do we do here? We can't get through this wall. We don't have any items. Uh, I mean, this is weird. I, I would have thought we'd just be able to go past, to be honest. Unless there's like something... No, nothing in the rubble. Okay, this is strange. don't see that we can uh yeah this is honestly really weird like oh hang on what's this sturdy wood the box to resist the wreck and kept withstanding that was weird like that didn't that didn't appear the first couple of times we went past that did it i don't know anyway so we can climb up on this now fine that was really weird. Um, what can we look at here? Wow. That skeleton in the background is so cool. Alright, what have we got here? I mean, that doesn't look very welcoming, does it? Oh, God. Again. Am I hallucinating? So, again, there's stuff here that doesn't belong. Verne's office, his home and refuge in Amiens, France. Uh, Jules Verne was born in Nantes and his literary, literary career took off in Paris but he chose Amiens, his wife's hometown, to reside because, despite being close to the capital, it provided him the required tranquility to write. I live apart from journalists and critics and do not leave my corner, he wrote to his brother Paul. Uh, during, his long, during his five years there, he settled at number 44 Boulevard Longville and then moved almost next door to number 2 Rue Charles Dubois, where he lived for 18 years and where the Jules Verne Museum is now located. A few years before he died, he returned to the house on Boulevard Longville, now known as Boulevard Jules Verne. It was an austere bare room. Under the window, there was a work table and it was spectacular not to see it in the usual mess that usually covers the tables of the literary. There was in the room only a single seat, not more furniture than a low sofa, wrote the famous reporter Nellie Bly of the American newspaper The New York World when she visited the author. Fern had in his office, preserved in the museum, on the desk, a brown globe on which he designed the itineraries of the travels of the characters of his novels and, with a set of compasses, measured the distances and calculated the time they spent in their travels. That is dedication, I tell you that. Uh, in the office, he has worked on some 30 novels, writing from 5 in the morning until 11. Then he would leave to attend his duties and get into bed around 7 in the evening to read books and magazines and take notes until midnight. Fully immersed. Fully, fully immersed. Right. Ooh. Okay, what was that? Something running away there. Ooh, what have we got here? A puzzle? Yeah, okay, so we've got to... Uh... Oh, I see. So. They move more than one. Ah, so that one moves three pieces how many okay uh so if we can yes there we go there we go not too tricky just a case of figuring out which ones move which <laughs> all right what do we have up here wow check out this place Oh no, destruction once more. It doesn't seem anybody has lived here for centuries. Vern, at last. Oh, Adriel. You are alive. Stop there. I won't let you or the Raven even get close to the flame. Vern, listen to me. I'm on your side. Forget about the Raven and Nemo's plans. There's something much more important at stake. I don't want to hear your reasons. You and Nemo are nothing but murder... Oh. What the hell? What was that? Your mind is collapsing. M my mind? What are you talking about? Adriel? Uh. 
Paris in the 20th century, written by Jules Verne? That's impossible. I would have given anything for not telling you what I am about to say. This book is very, way very inferior to Five Weeks in a Balloon. If you came to read it within a year, you would agree with me. These words, I've heard them before. To sum it all up, it's a failure. And if 1,000 men told me the opposite, I would tell them to get lost. Nobody will believe today in your prophecies, and nobody will be interested in them. It's signed by Pierre Jules Hetzel. These are the words of your editor. Now, now I remember the rejection, the pain. I know, Vern. That same pain is the reason why you have been brought to this world. You were trapped inside your imagination. Ah. What? But, but, who are you? I am yourself. But inside this very world you have created, I was called Placia a what? long time ago. Impossible. What are you talking about? Is this one of Nemo's rigs? Ah, my head. We're running out of time. You must listen to me. You are not Jules Verne, the scientist. That's not your real identity. Shut up. Think. Focus. You know you are not from this world. At this very same moment, you are at the Bridge of Ardennes in Paris. You are about to destroy the last book written by you. What feels like six months to you in your world has been nothing more than 20 seconds. Unconsciously, when you received Hetzel's rejection, you searched for shelter inside you. Who could blame you? You have such magnificent imagination that you have created a world we know as Hemera. Nevertheless, it was fear or Phobos that was the reason that impelled you to hide in Hemera, and you gave him full powers over your mind. He gave you the paradise that you would never want to leave. Since you arrived here, to that idyllic island after the wreck, I have been trying to leave you a trail of breadcrumbs to carefully drive you to the truth. A too straight or too early revelation could destroy your sanity, but I can't afford subtleness anymore. Phobos, through Raven, is about to get his hands on the flame. All things beautiful and extraordinary you have ever imagined will be obliterated and turned into an infinite wasteland. That is insane. If this is a fantasy, why can't I just wake up? Because in order to do it, you need the flame. It's a portal to your world. If Phobos takes control over it, you will be trapped here forever, in your world. You will turn insane, and you don't have much time left. Wow, uh, this is a lot. <laughs> Where are we? I'm not sure I can take any more jumps. It's one of the main conduits that directly connects with the flame. It will lead us to the Raven himself. We must finish him. All right, well, uh, wow. Open the main conduit door. Okay. Pierre Jules Hetzel was the only editor of Jules Verne with whom he created the collection of extraordinary voyages. He was one of his closest friends and the writer considered him as a spiritual father. Not in vain, Hetzel was also the editor of important writers of the time such as Balzac, Victor Hugo or Emile Zola. In 1862, in his office at Rue Jacob in Paris, he received Verne's first novel, Five Weeks in a Balloon. Very interested in children and young audiences, Hetzel was capable of seeing Verne's enormous talent, not only for adventures, but also for the popularisation of science, since knowledge was the main weapon of his protagonists. Thus, in January 1863, he published the novel with great success, starting Duke Verne's famous adventure saga. However, in 1864, he rejected the publication of the new novel of the promising Verne, Paris in the 20th Century, considering it too pessimistic. Through a letter to its author, he expresses his rejection and speaks of the poor quality of the story and its lack of interest. The editor knows the, his audience very well and believes that this novel is too serious and tragic. 
The rejection is a very hard blow for Verne, but there is no doubt that he takes good note of his editor's advice since, from that moment on, his work adopts a more optimistic and enthusiastic attitude towards the future, which undoubtedly contributed to making him the celebrity he is today. Paris in the 20th century was considered lost, however in 1989 it was found by Jean Verne, the writer's great-grandson, in Verne's son's safe. When it finally released in September 1994, it became a bestseller, and to our regret, once again proved what a great science fiction writer he was, for he prophesied a 20th century sadly close to our reality. Well, it's all coming together nicely now, isn't it? We're finally getting some answers. Feels like we might be getting to the end of the game as well, but we'll see. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coumadin, and Paul Leone. And I'll see you next time.